Yes, welcome back to the second stanza of the program, the conversation. Coming to you from TV 360 here in Lagos, Nigeria. I still have with me in the studio, uh, Alester Wilcox, FCA. Alester, thank you for staying with us on this program. Thank you, Nelson. Yes. It's my pleasure. On this second stanza of the program, I want to look at the economic policy of the President Bola met in Goa administration. And uh, when we talk about the economic policy, you talk about um, the removal of first subsidy as well as the unification of the uh, exchange rate system. And for me, you know, uh, I get worked up when I see people say, oh, the government is listening to the IMF. I'm sure that we are all aware in this country that uh, this issue of uh, fuel subsidy removal has been on the front burner for a long time. And people have said, look, this fuel subsidy is killing the economy. And at a point in the life of the last administration, the Minister for Finance uh, came, on, came on publicly and said, for eight months, they didn't get a cent from the sale of crude oil. And what was happening to the profit from sale of crude oil? It was being used, you know, uh, to subsidize the consumption of petrol. And also, you look at the uh, unification of the exchange rate system. Uh, Mr. President has always been an advocate of, you know, that uh, policy. And um, a lot of us are aware that there is this suspicion, there has been these allegations in the air, even why I'm saying there has been this allegation is that we have not arrested anybody and prosecuted them to serve as a pointer to give credence to that allegation. And it is the allegation of round tripping. Uh, and as, as a social scientist, I strongly believe that if you don't have the fact, it is still an allegation that some people collect, even businessmen have come up, have been privileged to attend a symposium meetings where businessmen have come up to clamor for the unification that they cannot be struggling to do business and make profit while some people's only line of business is to go and get uh, forex from the central bank and take it to the black market to sell. As we speak, the former CBN governor is under interrogation, is under trial, you know, for acts that can be termed economic sabotage. So for me, it is that the removal of first subsidy by the President Bola administration was a route that we had no other alternative, except if we want government uh, activity to collapse. And we all know what that means. It means our policemen will not be on the road or in the police station. The army will not be uh, you know, fighting uh, terrorists as what have you. Uh, the roads will not be built or maintained the schools, the hospitals, because these are agencies of state that the activities affect our livelihood, affect our well-being. You, you go to the general hospital or you go to the teaching hospital or the primary health centers, they are being run from government funds. So if people working there don't earn salaries, the hospital cannot buy diesel or petrol to power their generator. Definitely, you, we all know what the end result will be. So, when we, when we are complaining about this hard time, we are behaving as if we didn't know that we, are, we were all contributors to where we are. And if we want to live a better tomorrow, this is the sacrifice we have to make. There's no doubt about it that we are all feeling the pinch of the rising cost of goods and services. But the truth of the matter is that this uh, uh, regular recurring cry, oh, he has removed, I was even watching a video where one man was, um, one cleric was saying, uh, first thing that we want President Bola Metinubu to do is to, re is to re reintroduce the first subsidy. <laughs> then secondly, that uh, he should return the Naira to <laughs> 132 Naira, and I'm <laughs> like, do you think President Bola Metinubu produces Naira <laughs> and produces dollar? <laughs> so when you hear all this, is, I think the, uh, what we are doing here is to educate our viewers, because the role of the media is to educate and inform. But, you know, sadly, a lot of our people have turned it into politics. Oh, President Gulag Dionathan wanted to remove it in 2012. You people went on street. Now, you people should... No! It is about the same society. When President... I was part of the Ojota rally. And we know the reason why we resisted President Gulag Dionathan. Because President Gulag Dionathan had not shown transparency and accountability as the president. 
And we said we could not trust you to manage the first subsidy you know, uh, regime. And that was exactly, it was what President Muhammadu Buhari was subsidizing the price of uh, fuel. We didn't complain because we saw that we had a leader that we could trust with our finances. But the reason why we protested against President Gulag Jonathan was because of the, the lack of trust was also responsible for the crisis that rocked the Nigerian Governors Forum, if you remember. Yes. Where the Nigerian Governors Forum were alleging that President Gulag Jonathan was frittering was you know was you know uh, spending the crude oil savings without their authorization? They said they will save in January. In March, if there's a shortfall in allocation, they will come and say, "Okay, Finance Minister, the money we save in January, bring part of it to cushion the shortfall in allocation." The Finance Minister Kondi Ewala then will say, uh, "President Gulo Jonathan said I should spend it," and that was where the governors then under the leadership of uh, former Rutimiyamichi. River State uh, Governor, uh, Rutimiyamichi. Governor Ruth Miyamichi, decided that President Gulob Jonathan, we are not saving again with you. Let us share our money. And people continue to misinform, continue to, you know, try to twist the narrative as if when we were protesting against President Gulob Jonathan in 2012, it was because we didn't like the man or because we didn't like his party. Absolutely not. It was the Nigerian people's money. So, I want to, I, I, I'm putting it out there now that the removal of first subsidy and the unification of the foreign exchange system was one that was done with the best intentions. These are the, these are the drop, these are the, these are the outcome in the immediate, but I can, I'm rest assured that in the long run, things will continue, things will gradually, you know, shaping itself. And we we'll, we'll start to reap the benefits. Let me say this, Nelson. You 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 put in it rightly. As at the time, first of all, was removed. There was no alternative, no option. No option. Because uh, Nigeria was having yes, all of us felt it. I am. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I I I own a car. Uh, even if I don't own a car, I will enter transport. Mm -hmm. um, I provide power because I have, your, to you have, you have to run my gym. So so it's uh, it's it was it was a bitter pill that must be swallowed at that time because. Government revenue was no longer was no long, was coming, so coming yeah, it and was not sustainable. Was sustainable. So that was a that was a very smart move. Now the only problem people are having was was it thought out through, and was there a remedial action? What the what remedial action anybody would have expected is the fact that okay, not even the palliative that the government started giving, because uh, as far as I'm concerned, fuel has to be the, the subject has to go as a time it went, and then. Um, and then um, there was nothing wrong with that because Nigeria was the last country, about the few countries that were still subsidizing, not even the rich Arab countries were doing that. People pay fair value, for fair price for energy consumption. Now, the second major policy, which is now trying to tumble the economy, is the unification of the Naira. Um, it was wrongly done, I must admit. Because the Naira, the, 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 the unification of, of Naira could not have been achieved. Now, some economists have argued, uh, including Sanusi, and so many people have argued that uh, uh, you can unify the Naira. It's not possible. Why, why do you say so? From my own perspective, because you don't have control of the, you don't have supply. control of the uh, supply, supply from the black market, which you want to unify. Now, the black market, what you want to unify is the black market and the official market. Yes. Now, you, are, you, are, you, know, you know by the unification, you have curbed corruption in a way. No, no, no. In you terms see, of round because, trip. Because, no, because the black market, which you don't have control, yeah. will keep expanding. You understand? Where does the black market get its supply? They, they get supply from the same, either internal from the banks, either internal, which is a round tripping, or from... Um, other desperate remittance and everything. But majorly funded by what you call round tripping. Now, why do I say it will keep expanding? Because when supply is not adequate and demand keep us tripping supply, you still have that gap. But if the supply at point is at equilibrium with demand, demand yes. you can unify. You can have absolute control. But can you ever can you can we ever have a situation Impossible. where Impossible ah. because we are not a producing country. Yes. We are not, now, so what is happening now is the aftermath of it. And coupled with 
sabotage and economic uh, 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 economic sabotage. Yeah, what right. is happening today in Nigeria is not economic indices. It's not economic uh, policy. It's pure sabotage. People are deliberately manipulating our currency. And I am shocked and I'm, I don't know. Forgive me if I'm, I don't, I'm not in government, so I do not see the books. I don't know what they... But as an economist, as somebody that is, that is, that is knowledgeable in, the, in, 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 in economic matters, I do not see what on earth could be driving a country's currency to the more the way it is now. And I feel bad the seemingly silence of the monetary authorities, especially the CBN. But the CBN governor has been talking. He has not spoken the rightly. I, I, I'm, I'm surprised. See, what I'm saying is because you wake up in the morning. For instance, you know, when the government, after that unification, yeah. we saw a widening of the gap. Yeah. Instead of widening, mm. we got about $1,300 to the dollar. Mm. And a statement from, came from CBN, you know, came from NNPC that they've secured a monetary loan of $3 billion yeah, for for Afro Bank. Bank. Yeah. What happened? The next day, the Naira notes died to about 900 That So what is that? The money has not entered. Just a statement. The, 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 the Naira notes What died. do you think would have caused that? It's, that is the speculation. People who are manipulating were thinking that something is coming that will have stopped it. But when they waited... And nothing happened. It, it, they it, moved. They, they moved. Now, the CBN governor woke up one day and said, just made a statement, those who are speculators will pay heavily. It, 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 gave, it, a, it gave it a cost. Now, where, where am I going? What is happening now is not economic. And that is where I expect the monetary authorities. In fact, that should have been, the country should have been declared economic emergency. And with that, and with sweeping power to deal decisively, to deal decisively with perpetrators of this heinous crime. Because I cannot imagine that on day first that I wake up, the, 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 the Naira is exchanging at, the day is exchanging at 1,700 Naira. And by 24 hours later, I'm seeing 1,900 Naira. So what am I going to see tomorrow? What am I going to see next tomorrow? So which, which demand is driving it? So this is time so that it's CBN... More, it's more of, it's so from, there is no it's stop, more there is no demand. Manipulation, manipulation by speculators. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we want to call it a day on the program, the conversation. Till we come your way again next time, please continue to watch the conversation coming to you from TV360 here in Lagos. Till we come your way again, please have a good day. Bye-bye.